Hello. Today I would like to have a look at this uh, Audio Technica antenna and power distribution system for wireless microphones. This thing allows to mount four uh, wireless microphone receivers in a rack without a mess of uh, four power supplies and eight antennas. Uh, so using uh, such a unit we can have only two antennas plus some interconnect cables and it has um, uh, four 12 volt outputs to replace the power supplies. So very convenient and tidy uh, but this unit is quite old and this frequency range from 728 to 750 megahertz is useless currently in the United States because it is outside of the legal frequency range. What I really was looking for is something like this Shure UA844 antenna and power distribution system and if we look at the specs of this thing the frequency range here is from 470 megahertz and uh, these specifications uh, have 952 as the top frequency uh, but I believe this can be different in different models for different countries and here I highlighted in the list of accessories an antenna for the US market uh, and uh, here we have this frequency range from 470 to 698 megahertz and this is the legal range in the US or at least was until recently I didn't keep track of the FCC auction of the 600 megahertz band uh, the band in question from 570 megahertz to 698 uh, was uh, auctioned and either is already illegal uh, for use by wireless microphones and such or will become soon illegal uh, with some transition period of a year or two during which you should be really careful not to interfere with new legal users of this band so at least uh, before transmitting anything uh, scan the channels to see which channel is not occupied and I might be wrong in some details so check the rules in your area before transmitting in the 600 megahertz band but anyway uh, this uh, model from Shure can cost uh, $300 or so or maybe even more uh, so I picked up this guy for just $32 and I picked it up locally so I didn't pay for shipping and now I want to find out if I can modify the thing to use it in the legal frequency range in the United States. Here is the back of the unit. There are two independent channels, uh, channel A here and channel B here. Uh, these are antenna inputs and uh, four outputs from each channel. And there are also four outputs from the power supply to replace the power supplies of the receivers. So with just one power cord and two antennas we can connect four receivers and minimize the mess in a rack. First let's have a look at uh, what is going on now with the unit. I set my uh, signal generator to 740 MHz right in the middle of the range uh, of the unit and I set the amplitude to minus 10 dBm and the output of the generator is connected to the antenna A input and one of the outputs goes to the uh, transmitter tester and here we have minus 9.3 dBm uh, so the unit is supposed to have uh, 
a few dB of gain uh, to compensate for the splitter. So this is exactly as expected. Now let's see what happens if we go to the lower limit of the frequency range specified, which is uh, 728 MHz. 728 here. Uh, we see minus 10.5 dBm, which is still OK. And now let's go outside of the specified range. Let's go to 720 MHz and 720 here. So now we see minus 17 dBm, which is 7 dB down. So uh, that is also as expected uh, when we go outside of the specified range. Uh, we are starting to see an, a roll-off of some sort of a filter inside of the unit. And let's go even farther. Let's say 700 megahertz. 700 here. And now we see minus 30 dBm. So there is a quite a steep roll-off. Uh, so there must be some filter inside of this unit which is exactly as expected. Now let's see how can we change this. Look at this. I am quite happy about the quality here. So we have two identical channels and this is one of the inputs and sure enough we see a filter right after the input and before this amplifier and here we have a four-way splitter uh, so, uh, this is a ceramic filter marked 742C, and I think it means 742 MHz center frequency. So, I'm thinking about removing this filter for now, just for testing, putting a jumper instead. Uh, we need to see if we can go as low as 470 megahertz without significant loss and in general check this uh, whole range of frequencies we want from 470 to let's say 700 megahertz if we can stay within 3 db in that range that would be fantastic Potentially we can have a problem with that if the splitter, let's say, or some other components are not designed for that frequency range. So let's see uh, what happens if we remove this filter and put a jumper instead. And if that works, we will need to find some other filter instead. It would be a bad idea to work without any filter at all. Uh, to minimize the noise, we need to cut off all unwanted frequencies, uh, let's say all cell phone traffic above 700 megahertz and Wi-Fi and such. But uh, for now, let's test without the filter. All right, using this hot air station, I removed this filter in channel A. A jumper is installed. Let's give this a go. Here we have 740 megahertz again, just for reference. And now we have minus 7.4 dBm output. Before it was minus 9.3. So it is about 2 dB higher. So the insertion loss of that uh, bandpass filter is about 2 dB or so, uh, which sounds about right. Now let's try 700 MHz. And we read minus 6.8 dBm, which is quite promising. Let's go even lower to 600 megahertz and the result is minus 13.6 this is not very good 
but let's go even lower 500 megahertz oh this is better minus 7.6 so let's try the minimum we want which is 470 megahertz 470 and here we have minus 11.3 so I'm not sure it's gonna work perfectly but uh, I think I'm going to take more points across this whole range and graph it so we can see the result uh, I wish I could do it easily here just sweep across the whole range and uh, easily see the response on the screen um, perhaps I could automate this using GPIB interface in the computer but uh, let's not worry about this for now let's just do it manually Here is the result. I measured from 470 to 700 megahertz in 10 megahertz steps. And unfortunately, the response in this frequency range is quite far from flat. The difference here is slightly more than 8 dB. But if we forget about the 600 megahertz band, let's say it's not available anymore from uh, 570 and up uh, this unit can be usable in the frequency range uh, which is available going forward from 470 to 570 I am afraid it does not really cover the whole range but somewhere from 480, 490 to 550 or something like that can work fine I suppose regarding a replacement filter I found that uh, there are not too many options available unfortunately and surprisingly I think this is the best option uh, at least uh, the best I found so far on Mouser uh, this is uh, 470 to 770 megahertz filter slightly more on the high end than we really need and it is a tiny 805 package or in metric system it is 2 millimeters by 1.2 they are 85 cents a piece I ordered a few let's give them a go the parts have arrived from Mouser and compare these tiny packages with this original filter soldering will be a bit of a challenge let's see what I can do I had to trim this uh, ground trace uh, to make it slightly narrower well, approximately in half uh, because before it was too wide uh, you see this is the filter and if I put it here um, the wide ground trace um, uh, shorted the input and the output to the ground here is the result sorry I don't have a macro lens or a microscope to show it closer I used uh, this very thin gauge 30 wire on both ends and it was not very easy but I think I managed fine let's test here is the result of the blue graph we have seen before and the red one is with the new filter and surprisingly now the response looks a bit more flat and if we look carefully we started with minus 10 dBm input signal so there is some gain here about 2 dB but a minus 3 dB point is here at minus 13 and now we are above that throughout this whole range and let's not forget about uh, cable loss 
I think we can safely assume about a dB or even more of loss in the cables and connectors. So with this adjustment, even the blue graph um, should be above minus 3 dB point everywhere, even in this um, bad region. So I think I was wrong uh, before saying that only this uh, range is usable. And here is the cable loss measurement. Uh, the same cables and connectors, this time connected through this BNC coupler. And we have 500 megahertz, minus 10 dBm in, minus 11.4 out. So, about 1.4 dB of loss in these cables and connectors. Here is the result for channel B. And I measured in a wider range of frequencies. I wanted to see the effect of the filter. And as you can see, it really removes the stuff above 770 MHz, as promised. And the results here are identical to channel A. So I think we can declare a success. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.